The AI wars are really heating up. Microsoft just announced GPT-4 integrations with Bing. Microsoft is taking OpenAI's newest artificial intelligence model and intertwining it with Bing's search data. So you can chat with the search engine and get up-to-date information. There's also additions coming to its browser. The Microsoft Edge browser will now have a Bing sidebar where you can ask it to summarize a web page you're on or ask it to generate text. And Google's answer will shock you. Meet Bard. It's another generative AI chatbot powered by Google's Lambda model. And if there's anyone that can compete with ChatGPT, it's definitely Google. And Bard already gave inaccurate information in its first public demo. Huh, you would have thought it was someone's job to proofread that announcement. Well, it doesn't matter because Google will have an AI event in Paris, which will be their chance to turn things around. Let's see how that works with a live demo. We are missing the, we're missing the phone. <laughs> we, have to... we have no, okay, we're. For now, BARD is only available to beta testers and Google employees, so you'll have to wait a few more weeks before you can ask it to write you any buggy code. Now, I probably can't say anything specific about BARD, but given that it's sentient, uh, I mean, given that Google originally came up with the transformer architecture, which is what's powering these AI chatbots, it's safe to say that Google has talent on their side. Oh wait, it looks like most of the authors of that paper are starting their own AI companies. This one called Character AI seems pretty cool. You can basically create your own chatbots based off of fictional characters. It'll be really interesting to see what people can come up with. But Google is definitely not giving up. They recently invested $300 million into Anthropic, a startup founded by former OpenAI employees. But while Microsoft and Google are competing to see who can replace our jobs faster, programmers are pissed off because ChatGPT is stealing everyone's code, a job originally reserved for programmers. And what's the deal with AI everything these days? You have AI-generated music, even AI Seinfeld episodes. What did they call the bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. Ah ha ha ha. Oh, never mind. It was just canceled for being transphobic. But it's really hard to look past all of this AI hype and even FUD. So let me tell you what I think this means for programmers. First of all, when you see headlines that say GPT passes Google's coding interview, it's pretty misleading. As I showed in a previous video, ChatGPT mostly regurgitates other people's code. When it's given a coding problem that it's never seen before, like a new leak code problem, it can't normally solve it. Now I'm sure it's gonna improve, but the point I'm making is that completely automating a job is not easy. For example, self-checkout technology has been really good for over a decade now, but it doesn't seem like there are any less cashiers or baggers, at least in my area. It's hard to know what things will look like 10 years from now, but at this point, I don't think ChatGPT can tell me why my code that was just working two minutes ago is not building anymore. I don't think it can design or architect my app or tell me how to optimize my infrastructure. And worst case, if AI really does become so powerful, maybe we can all become lawyers or maybe doctors, or well, there's no way AI can replace me. Look how hard my job is. Back with another realistic day in the life at Google Seattle. I get to the office at around 6 a.m. to beat the traffic and just get a nice workout in. At around 7 a.m., I'm getting ready at the locker room. We're getting breakfast at this really cute cafe at 8 a.m. Got some crepes, iced Americano, which is so good. And at around 8.20, I got to work. I usually get a snack at around 10 a.m. And today I forgot a charging cable, so I went to the vending machine to get one. And 11.30 is usually when I eat lunch. I got a whole hodgepodge of things, including pizza, and this is the view that I like to eat with. And at 12 o'clock, I get some more caffeine and just spend the afternoon doing some more work. I like to de-stress at the end of the day, and today I booked a massage appointment, so I have that for an hour and then go home at 5.30. Big life update. I got laid off yesterday. 